In this introductory lesson, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Dreamweaver is and, equally importantly, what it isn't. Dreamweaver is an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, for building websites. Some people describe Dreamweaver as a WYSIWYG program, WYSIWYG being the acronym for what you see is what you get. But I think that's misleading. Dreamweaver is certainly a visual program, but it's not WYSIWYG. Let me open this page to show you what I mean. This is the home page of the case study that runs through much of this course, and I'm currently using Dreamweaver's design view. This gives me a fairly accurate idea of what the page will look like in a browser. But I can also view it in Dreamweaver's internal browser by turning on Live View. And let's just hide the panels. And if I scroll down, that's what the page will look like in a browser. It's being rendered by Dreamweaver's Live View, which uses the WebKit browser engine. This is the same browser engine that's used in Safari, iOS, Google Chrome, and also in Opera. WebKit is also used by most mobile devices, so you can see your page in a browser without even having to leave Dreamweaver. So that's the very visual aspect of Dreamweaver. But if I turn off Live View and bring back the panels and then scroll down, let's say I want to move this image here to the other side of the text. In a real WYSIWYG program, you'd just be able to drag and drop it, but let's see what happens if I try to do that. It's actually inside a figure element, so I'll select that and then drag. And what I end up with is a mess. Although you can drag and drop some elements, basically the layout of a web page is controlled by CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. So let's undo that. And then I'm going to close the Files panel so I can see this CSS Designer panel better. And what I need to do is to select this teaser figure, which controls that particular element, and then scroll down a little bit, and I find Float here. And if I make that Float right, it moves that image to the right-hand side and also the other images that have got the same class applied to them. And if I right-click here and select Go to Code, Dreamweaver displays the code that it has created to float that figure to the right. You don't need to create this code yourself. Dreamweaver will do it for you, although if you prefer, you can actually go into code view and type it yourself. Dreamweaver doesn't stop you doing that. But what you really need is to understand what the code is for and which properties, which CSS properties are being used. Similarly, you need to understand the HTML. If I select source code up here, Dreamweaver displays the HTML source code for the page. As with CSS, Dreamweaver will generate this code for you automatically, but you do need to understand what it's for. And it's actually not all that difficult to understand. Here we've got a figure element which contains a figure. IMG is for an image. Fig caption, not very difficult to guess that that is for the caption for a figure. Down here we've got H3, that's a level 3 heading, in other words a subheading, and this tag down here is for a paragraph. Because Dreamweaver assists you by generating most of the CSS and HTML markup automatically, you don't need to worry about learning everything by heart, but you do need to become familiar with the most common elements and CSS properties, otherwise you won't know what Dreamweaver is doing. Understanding the markup that Dreamweaver creates on your behalf is vital to working successfully with the program and to becoming a successful web designer or developer. If the thought of code send shivers up your spine, you might be better off using Adobe Muse instead of Dreamweaver. But before you start rushing off in the other direction, I urge you to give Dreamweaver a try. Once you overcome any anxiety about code, you'll find it isn't all that difficult. And sites built in Dreamweaver are more flexible. Web pages built in Muse can't be edited in any other program, but pages built in Dreamweaver use standard HTML and CSS and can be edited in any text editor. You work much of the time through specialised panels and dialog boxes. 
One of the most important is this one here at the bottom. It's known as the Property Inspector. I've currently got an image selected in the document window, so it's showing me the properties of the image. But if I click inside text, it changes. It's context sensitive and it gives me the properties for text. Another very important panel is this CSS Designer panel. It controls the styles and the layout of your web page, but it's got some very useful visual tools in it. Two other important panels are the Files panel and the Insert panel. The Insert panel helps you build web pages by inserting common HTML elements. It also deals with structure, multimedia elements, forms and jQuery UI widgets. The Files panel isn't simply for the files in a particular folder. It's actually what controls your website. Dreamweaver is a site-based program. You build an exact copy of your website on your local computer in Dreamweaver and when it's ready to deploy on the internet, you upload it to your remote web server from Dreamweaver. You can also download an existing site and edit it in Dreamweaver. And if you're someone who enjoys working directly in the code, CodeView has lots of code hints for HTML, JavaScript and for some of the JavaScript frameworks. It also has support for the popular server-side technology PHP, which is used to build dynamic web pages. So finding your way around the Dreamweaver interface can seem overwhelming at the start, because it's a tool that brings together most aspects of web development. But as you progress through the course, you'll become quickly familiar with the most important parts of the user interface, and I hope you'll be building websites in next to no time. One final thing I ought to point out. Dreamweaver CC is constantly evolving. In fact, it was changing as I was recording the lessons in this course. You might notice cosmetic changes to the interface in some lessons, or the addition of an extra icon in a toolbar. More changes are inevitable in future. Take them in your stride. Web development is evolving, but the basic principles I teach in this course should stand the test of time.